In the previous video, we placed the refrigerator block here and the range oven, hob, cooker, or whatever you want to call it here. What we're going to look at now is a little bit further with design reuse, but we're going to start looking at dynamic blocks. Now, dynamic blocks are regular AutoCAD blocks, but they have parameters, actions, visibility states, and so on applied to them to make them, in essence, parametric and quicker and easier to use. So let's have a look now at some dynamic blocks. Now, if you want to follow along with the video, you'll notice that I've got dynamic blocks complete open. You need to make sure that you're using dynamicblocks.dwg from your working files. Now, what I'm going to do is utilize this space here in the kitchen. I'm going to go to the Home tab, make sure I'm on the Furniture layer this time. So make sure you scroll down, select Furniture, and we're going to place some kitchen furniture in this space here. Now, I'm going to use the Block panel in the Home tab and click on Insert, and there's my Insert dialog box. I'm also going to make sure that I select the right block, which is a block called Table. Now, as soon as I select that, I get my preview, as I do with any AutoCAD block, but you'll notice there's a little lightning symbol next to it. Now, dynamic blocks allow you to tweak those blocks by way of, like I said, parameters, actions, visibility states, and so on. You can develop your own dynamic blocks, and there is an infinite skills course called Blocks and Dynamic Blocks for AutoCAD, and that teaches you all about dynamic blocks and how they can be utilized, created, and placed in your drawings. In this case, we're going to place it just as if we were placing a regular block. So, insertion point is ticked to specify on screen. Scale is 1. Rotation we're going to leave at 0, horizontal. And I'm going to click on OK. Make sure that explode is unticked. And there's our block coming into the drawing. Now, I'm filling up that space there near the breakfast bar in the kitchen. And I'm placing a nice little sort of table and chair arrangement there. So, it's near the big window in the wall there as well. So, you get lots of natural light. So I'll click there, and the block is in place. Now if I select that block, you'll notice there's some funny little arrows there. Now these arrows allow me to resize the table and add more chairs to it, and I can do that in either direction, left or right. So if I click there and drag one notch to the right, it gives me a six-seater table, but I can see that doesn't fit. So because I've got this ability with my dynamic block, I can check which style of dynamic block fits in that space. So I'll click there again, drag back to the left and click again, and I know that my four-seater table fits there. I'll hit Escape to deselect and zoom out slightly. So you can see there how easy it is to work with a dynamic block. Now, I'm going to zoom out, I'm going to pan across, and I'm going to zoom in now on this central room here on the first floor upstairs in our house this time. So I'll zoom in a bit, get a nice bit of zoom and magnification there so I can see what I'm doing. Now, you'll notice my furniture layer there is all I've got. I don't actually have any sanitary setting there, any sanitary wear like toilets or a bathtub, for example. So what I'll do, I hit Escape, I'll go to my Layer Properties Manager, and I'll just click on New, like so, and I'll put in there Sanitary, like so, and press Enter. Now, the good thing is I don't need to worry about the layer colour because it adopts the current layer's colour, which is the same as furniture. Now, normally, I would probably keep those the same colour to maintain a bit of consistency in the drawing. So that's great. I'll double-click there, next to Sanitary to make it the current layer, and then close the Layer Properties Manager. So there's my Sanitary layer up there on the ribbon. So I'll go to Insert again in the Block panel, click on the down arrow, and you'll see there I've got a basin and a bathroom sink that I can bring in, also a toilet as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my basin first, my dynamic. Can you see the DYN that was created? DYN standing for dynamic. Again, scale, leave at 1, insertion point ticked, rotation leave at 0, explode unticked, and click on OK. And there's my basin there. Now I'm just going to bring that in, click there like that, and then zoom in a bit, click on the block itself, and you'll see it's got a grip there that I can utilize. I can click on that grip. I'm going to place that on the midpoint of that wall there, and I'll just hit Escape to deselect. So it looks like any other block, but when I click on it, and then click on this Visibility States arrow here, I can have a side view. I can also have a front view. Not necessary in a plan, so I go back to the plan view. Now, this particular block 
actually gets developed and created in the Infinite Skills Blocks and Dynamics Blocks course. So I just hit Escape there. That's a dynamic block. It's got different visibility states for different environments where you would use the block. So let's insert one more dynamic block. Let's insert the toilet block next to the basin. So I'll go back to the pull down here in my insert dialog box, specify on screen, scale one, rotation zero, explode unticked, click on OK, and there it is there. But look, if I touch a wall, because it's dynamic, can you see there? It's actually aligning itself because it's got an alignment parameter. So I'll just drop it there on that nearest snap there, click, and there's my toilet inserted in the bathroom upstairs in my construction drawing. So that's how you utilize your dynamic blocks.